Kenya is basically um, a trick. the video your girl is back with you another story time if you my channel hey girl hey and if you're a returning subscriber i don't even have to say anything because you know what's up i know what's up we know what's up and that's on what that's on what that's on period and mary had a little lamb as y'all can see by the title of the video today's story time is going to be about my long time soccer and by long time this man stalked me for like a year and i think i'm safe enough to tell this story time because i haven't seen or like heard or had any signs of him since 2021 y'all so i think i'm good enough to tell this story time before we get into this video, let me go ahead and give a little disclaimer. Daddy, if I call you father, if you my father, click off this video. Stop watching this video, y'all. Every time I post a video, my daddy wants the backstory of the video. Why I ain't tell him when this was the... Uh, we not doing the questions today. So this is your disclaimer. This is a personal disclaimer for you, daddy. If you're watching this video, click off the video because this video not for you. This video is for the girls. So just click off. But without further ado, y'all, let's go ahead and get into this story time. So y'all already know in order for any of my story times to make sense, I have to give y'all a little backstory. So this happened back in 2021. We're going to go ahead and name my stalker. Let's call him Kenya because that's where he was from. So I met him back in 2021 when I was on vacation in Cancun, Mexico. And if you were OG here, you would briefly, you would kind of remember him because I mentioned him in a previous story time. So this is the time where I met him. This was back summer 2021. Um, it was kind of during COVID, y'all. When I met him, he was on vacation with a younger woman and she was like in her 30s. And I had, we had followed each other on social media. Anytime she would post on her Instagram or on any of her socials, she would never show Kenya. Like she would post like the picture of the food, the picture of the room, the picture of the shopping bag, but she would never post the person that she was with. And if you recall from that story time, she basically said that Kenya was just one of her friends. She was her homeboy. Um, and she was basically pretending like she was on vacation by herself. But the whole time while I was in Mexico, I was seeing him, like I said, he was there with the girl and me and the girl, we were like turning up together, drinking together. When I was in town, we were on vacation. On the last day of the vacation, I woke up like at 7 a.m. and I went down to go get one last drink because we were staying at this all-inclusive, what were we staying? I think we were staying at um, the West End in Cancun, y'all. And both of my friends were asleep and I woke up like at 7 a.m. And I went downstairs to the bar to go get a drink. And lo and behold, guess who I see? I see Kenya down there. And when I see him, you know, I'm keeping it real cute and casual. And I'm just like, hey, because like I said, the entire time I've been on vacation, I low-key been hanging out with him because I'm hanging out with the girl that he's been on, that he basically took on this trip. And he's like in the background. So if we in the section, he's like in the corner in the section. He's He was real quiet and timid, y'all. He wasn't really speaking to us anytime throughout this vacation until the last day. So I go down there, I order me a pina colada and he's already at the bar and he has a few drinks. And as soon as he sees me, he's just like, hey, what's your name? Um, how old are you? And I'm just like, my name's Asia, I'm 24, I'm from Florida. And you know, we just keeping up with small talk. But the whole time while he's talking to me, asking me all these questions, y'all, I'm looking around like, where is homegirl? Cause you ain't have this much mouth for this much to say the entire vacation. Like I've been with you for the past four days. Cause like I said, anytime I left the hotel, nine times out of 10, I would see Kenya and the girl that he was taking on vacation. Like they did, they booked some of the same excursions as us. We went to some of the same restaurants. And of course we're staying at the same resort. So if I'm out at the pool or if I'm out in the yard at the hotel, I see Kenya and the woman that he took to vacation. So I'm looking around like, like, where is homegirl at? Like, you have so much to say because she ain't here. So I just ask him. I'm just like, oh, where is homegirl at? And then he just like, oh, her flight left early. She already um, left out or whatever. And then he starts telling me a little bit about him, y'all. He says that he's from Kenya. He didn't tell me his age. He said he didn't have any kids. And then he tells me that he's based in L.A. He was just like, have you ever been to L.A.? At that time, y'all, I had never been to L.A. It's like, yeah, you should come out there. Um, I stay out there. And if you want to come out there, it's on me. Like, if you want to go on vacation, it's on me. So it was just giving real, like, all right, trickish vibes. But I'm not going to hold you, y'all. I I don't know, like, I ain't never rubbed skins with a crinkle cut man. Like, I ain't never kissed wrinkled lips. Like, I don't get down like that. So, I'm just taking everything that he says and I'm just letting it go into one ear 
and out the other ear. I'm not really taking him serious or whatever. So he's coming off very flirtatious and he's basically letting me know like wherever I want to go on a trip like he'll pay for it we even start talking about like different countries that i want to visit so i start telling him like my dream vacation and where i'm going next and what i have planned and he's telling me that he's going to greece in a few weeks and we just doing a whole bunch of small talk i probably was at the bar with him for about no more than like 20 30 minutes y'all i got my drink he paid for the tab and i went to the pool and that was pretty much that like i didn't oh let me let me back up i'm lying y'all um, I did give him my Instagram because he was just like, contact me. Like, if you ever out in LA, I'm out there. If you ever want to go anywhere, con contact me, y'all. Basically, he was trying to proposition me, letting me know that he's a trick. So fast forward, um, I catch my flight. I leave Cancun. Um, when I get back to Orlando, because that's where I was staying at the time, he did write me on Instagram just asking me if I made it back safely. I said I made it back safely. I'm telling him, did he make it back safely? He said, yeah. And that was it. I haven't, I didn't really hear from this man um, after that. Mind you, this was all the way back in 2021. Fast forward to, no, is that what, yeah, that is. That's June. It was June 2021. Fast forward to June, or maybe it was May. It was either May or June, y'all, 2022. I'm in Houston now, and I'm working as a bottle girl at a few clubs. And around this time, if you've ever been a bottle girl for, like, a promo team or if you ever worked in the nightlife, you know you have to, like, promo a lot and post a lot and let people know, like, hey, come out or whatever. So I'm not going to tell y'all the name of one of the clubs that I was working at. So we're just going to call this club Tuna Fish. So I'm working at Tuna Fish and <laughs> I just remember I posted a little flyer basically saying like, hey, I'm we at Tuna Fish tonight. Come see me. Like bring the tartar sauce. Like come see me tonight or whatever. And it was crazy because I didn't even think anything of it, y'all. But hella, I don't know. It Actually, no, it wasn't even an event or I don't recall it being an event or anything. But hella men just started swiping up on my story that I haven't talked to in forever. It was like guys from high school. It was guys that I had just recently met. It was just a whole bunch of people that I had never really had any conversation with before. And Kenya happened to be one of them. And he was just like, oh, um, I'm going to be there tonight. Mind you, y'all, I didn't put two and two together because this is like a whole year later. I haven't seen this man, haven't really talked to him like that. And he wasn't really a poster. He had like maybe three pictures on his page and it was like of the ground, y'all. Like he didn't really post a lot. The only way I knew it was him is because his little Ivy, like his profile picture on Instagram, it had it had his face there. So he swipes up on there and he was just like, yeah, I'm going to be there tonight. Um, are you going to be there tonight? And I'm like, yeah, ask for my little nickname at the time was Ace, y'all, my little nightlife nickname. So I'm like, yeah, ask for Ace. I'm going to be there. So fast forward to that night, when I get to the club finally, and yeah, he's at the bar. And if you ever worked in nightlife, if somebody's working at the bar, you can't tell them to come to your section. You can't serve them. You can't do anything because that's the bartender's money. Like that's her client or whatever. If a person sits at the bar or they're by the bar, you can't, you can't, you can't address him. I can't serve him or anything. So when I see him, when I come in, I see he's at the bar. Um, of course, I go over there and I'm just like, hey, um, how you doing? Long time no see. Like, y'all, really small talk or whatever. He's like, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. I almost didn't recognize you. Like, you grew up. And it was weird that he was saying this, y'all, because <laughs> Ninja, it had only been a year. Like, how much growing did I do from Cancun to now? That was literally last summer. So it's it's been about a year later. So I'm just like, yeah, it's been some time or whatever. I chop it up with him for probably no more than like two minutes, y'all. And I go on my way because like I said, he was already at the bar. So I'm greeting my tables or whatever. I'm mainly in the front because like I said, it was a Thursday. It was a slow night. Every once in a while, I would pass the bar just to see how my table was doing and they was doing good. But every time I would go to the back, y'all, to go check on my table because I have to pass the bar because my table is in the corner, I would see Kenya like staring me down and it was piercing. Like y'all, you would think I owed this man some money the way he was staring at me. Like one leg couldn't go in front of the other leg without his eyes following my body. So I'm like this and he's like this. Like everywhere I go back and forth, head like no shame about it. He not trying to be discreet about it. Like he just following me even when I'm in the front anytime I would be on my phone and I would look up he would be staring like directly at me and of course he's a customer so I would do this little smile like mm -hmm. but I'm doing a little crunchy white person smile. I'm like mm -hmm. and then he's like mm -hmm. and I'm like mm -hmm. and he's like mm -hmm. has this mischievous type of look on his face every time he see me um but I'm not really thinking anything of it. I'm just like all right 
that's weird or whatever but i carry on the last time i go back to my um table again y'all he's looking at me eyes follow me i don't say nothing so i sit down in the front and i'm at the host stand and i'm on instagram y'all i get this message from him and he was just like come here you don't want to make no money and i look up and he's staring directly at me so he's like motioning me to like come here so i go over there and at this time you weren't allowed to sit at the bar that's why i wasn't like trying to sit down y'all but he kept telling me like to sit down to accompany him and have a seat or whatever so i'm trying to explain to him mind you we are in a lounge so there's loud music playing i'm basically trying to tell him like hey um i can't really help you with anything because you at the bar if you want me to accompany you you need to buy a section like you need to be at a table and we can i can work something out like i can serve you food and i can serve you drinks over there but while you sitting at the bar i can't really do much and at the time the bartender she was one of those bartenders that had competition with everybody like she thought everybody was trying to take her money so the whole time while i'm talking to him she eyeballing me down thinking i'm about to take her her money he had about one or two drinks y'all so i keep trying to like discreetly tell him like hey if you want me to accompany you you're gonna have to get a table so he's like where where, where do i have to go where i have to go uh, ace 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 where i have to go he had a very strict accent y'all he's like where i gotta go where i gotta go and i'm like come over here and i'm gonna serve you or whatever so he closes out his tab at the bar he comes to my section y'all and he sits at a table i bring him another menu over there he orders two bottles uh um don julio i look confused because there's only one of him like why do you need two don julios but okay i pop the bottles open for him pour him a drink and tuna fish was a chill club like if i wanted to sit down and talk to him i could do that and he was also telling me to um take shots with him so i don't remember if i had one i know i didn't have no more than two rounds of shots with him and like i said tuna fish was a chill club so if your client is telling you they want you to take a shot with them or they want you to smoke hookah you was allowed to do that in front of the client that's probably why this club not even open no more y'all because they was too lenient but anyway i take a shot with him or whatever and i'm talking to him and out of nowhere he asked me he was like you have a husband you have a man and i'm just like no i don't have a man and he was like all right you're my wife you're gonna be my wife and y'all this man could be my granddaddy damn near so i'm just i bust out laughing i'm just like yeah 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 like whatever and i'm not trying to be rude because <laughs> it was slow it was a very slow night y'all so i'm trying to get my money so i'm just like yeah 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 you probably already got a wife and he was like no i don't have a wife i've never been married before because you're my wife i've been waiting for you asia asia you you the wife i've been waiting for you that's how he talking to me y'all so i'm just keeping it real cute and i'm laughing it off because like i said he's a customer and he was probably already lit at this point so i'm thinking like yeah yeah the man just talking or whatever so he keeps asking me like oh why you don't have why you're not married how old are you why you're not married you're almost 30 why you sir 30 is a scratch a scratch at this time y'all i was 24 so i'm like that's a scratch but okay but he's like yeah you almost 30 in my country the girls get married at 18 why like why you not married and i'm just like well this is not your country sir and i'm not married because i'm just not married or whatever and he was like it's okay i'm gonna marry you i'm gonna marry you you can pick out a ring what cut the size like what's your ring thing i'm gonna marry you so y'all i'm just letting him say whatever he need to say to get drunk 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 so he can tip 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 i'm just keep pouring his drinks or whatever just keep talking i'm going back and forth to the front checking out other tables it did get a little busy or whatever but the mainly that whole night i was with uh kenny or whatever so finally i want to say it was like right before they was about to close they closed at 2 a.m and i think around 1 p.m we wrapped his tab up his tab came out to like 500 dollars and he ended up tipping me um two hundred dollars out of the five hundred dollars because at this club they do do automatic gratuity y'all and he tipped me on top of the gratuity so you know i'm happy i'm like oh kenya come back and see me come back and see me tomorrow like come back and see me every day if you need to come see me or whatever so i wrap that up he leaves and um i'm still at work like i said the club didn't close at two but typically at this time i didn't make it home until like 3 a.m y'all so when i get home i don't check my instagram i don't check my phone or anything but the next morning when i check my phone why is kenya blowing me up like a bill collector y'all i have all these messages and phone calls and that's one of my pet peeves when somebody call me on instagram like they know me let me know if it's just me and i know the feature is there for people to call you but i think that's weird if you call me on instagram 
without asking me, can you call me first? Or if you call me, I don't know y'all. I just, I don't like it. Cause it came to my phone as if he was calling me. Like it was in my call log and it said Kenya. And it was like 20 missed calls. And he was calling at like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. And he wrote all these messages and he was just like, you not up, what time you get off work? I'm still outside the club. You not up, you not up. Like he kept just saying, you not up, you not up. What time you get off work? So I see the message and immediately I go ahead and just restrict his account. Like I'm quick with the restrict. I don't block you, but baby, I'm going to restrict the account in a minute because you hit me up like you trying to collect the bill and I don't like that. So I restricted his account. Following day, again, I post the flyer saying tonight we at Tuna Fish, come out to the club. Fast forward, y'all. Um, oh, I'm lying. Let me not say Tuna Fish. Let me go ahead and call this other club uh tuna fish 2.0 2 because at the time i was working for a promo team so i'm at multiple venues so the first night i was at tuna fish on that friday night now i'm at tuna fish 2.0 i post a flyer um keep in mind kenya had already told me the next day that he was coming back to tuna fish the first tuna fish but when i posted that flyer on my um story or whatever I'm not really thinking anything of it, y'all, because I'm not getting any of his messages. So he swiped up on that on that flyer of me saying I'm at Tuna Fish 2.0. At the time, I didn't realize it because, like I said, that morning I had already um, restricted his account, so all of his messages was going to my request, so I didn't see it. But fast forward to that night, I pull up the Tuna Fish 2.0 starts picking up around like i say like 10 ish because like i said it was a friday and it was an event that weekend so everybody and their mama is in tuna fish 2.0 so i'm running my rounds i'm doing my tables and uh, i want to say i don't know what it was but y'all can know you can just feel it was weird because like i said it was a club full of people y'all but i just felt somebody like staring at me like staring at me hard y'all it was on some weird like psychic ish y'all it felt like i had deja vu it's like i knew it was him but i wasn't really thinking it was him because like i said he said that he was gonna be at tuna fish um tuna fish one like the first club that i was just working at the night before so i just turned my head like really quick like this y'all and it was him he was staring directly at me or whatever and of course when i seen him i'm just like oh hey kenya so i started making my way over there he's in a section with a whole bunch of um women and these sections how do you describe them they were like the booth section so it was like a small table max four people could sit at the table but there was like an entourage of women and like people just everywhere y'all so of course i see him or whatever and he's just like um what section are you in what section and i'm just like oh i'm working over there he's like all right i'm coming so you know baby i don't mind anything to get that coin um i pick up his hookah i bring it over there to the other table and um i let them know i tell the the bartender not the bartender but the bottle the head bottle girl i'm telling her like oh i booked him um tonight or whatever so she's like that's cool or whatever put him in my section it was a whole bunch of drama that night because of this because the girl got mad because he left her section and came over there to me and she already knew that he was a good tipper so it was a whole bunch of drama that entire night y'all but anyway um he comes over there when he comes over there he's also with this young girl we gonna call her I don't even know what to call her, y'all. We just gonna call her Youngkin because this girl looked like she was no older than like 21. She honestly looked like she can barely even get into the club. It was cool, y'all. Like, as soon as I seen her, she complimented me. She was like, oh my gosh, you're so pretty. Um, I made her drinks. Me and her just talking back and forth. We took a few shots together and she was a real cool vibe. She just seemed like a very young girl. So while I'm sitting over there by their section, because I think I had, actually, I only had two tables that night because like I said, nightlife can be very messy they was very petty because they was mad that i took them over there so they stopped putting people in my section like they they skipped over me a few times because they was mad about me pulling him away from her y'all and saying that i that um i booked him when really i didn't he didn't book me but anyway i'm over there the, mainly the whole night with them because like i said i know he's a great tipper and the girl that he was with young and she was y'all the girl was late i'm not gonna hold you like every song that came on word from word like she knew my abcs so i'm vibing and i'm chilling and the whole time while i'm over here he's saying a little odd stuff in my ear and he was just like um why you didn't answer why you didn't pick up why you didn't answer you know i've been messaging you like open your phone 
And I'm trying to play it off. I already know that I have restricted him, y'all. I'm trying to play it off. I'll go to my Instagram. And I'm thinking, because he like 50 years old, that he don't really know how to operate Instagram. Y'all, why I go to my messages, and I'm like this on my messages. And I'm like, see, see. And I'm just like scrolling. I'm like, see, I didn't get no messages from you. I don't get no message from you. Y'all, why this man hit request? And he was like, I'm right there. Why Why, why am I restricted? Why, why, why am I restricted? I'm here. I'm here. You want to make money? You want to make money? Ah, you don't want to make money. You don't want to make... So I'm just like, oh my gosh, I don't know how you got restricted. People be messaging me so much and I just be randomly um, restricting accounts. Like, I don't know how that happened. I'm trying to play, y'all. I'm playing Krishan Rock. I'm playing Mad Slow. I'm just like, huh? Like, I don't, I don't know what's going on or whatever. So he's like, yeah, I messaged you. I was trying to see where you was going to be at. Da, 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 da. And that was the first red flag right there because like I say, why are you pulling up my page trying to be everywhere that I'm at? And then you was already in a section, but you were so eager to be in my section. Thinking back, y'all, it was mad weird, but I didn't I didn't put two and two together. I'm kind of thinking like, oh, it's better to walk in a club with somebody booked than for you to try to wait for people to um, be put in your section. So I'm thinking like money. I'm not really thinking it's weird at the time. But looking back, y'all, all the signs was there. It was very weird. And looking back, it kind of seems like I let him on. But if you ever worked in nightlife, you know how it goes. Like, you have to be super nice and flirty to all your customers. Like, everybody, your husband, while you at work, like, it's a part of the game. It's, it's I'm a, I'm a bottle girl. So, I'm talking to him or whatever. And he's, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I ain't see your message or whatever. And he was like, did you pick out your cut? And I'm like, can you pick out my cut? He's like, yeah, what ring cut did you want? What ring size do you want? Again, y'all, I'm bluffing it off. Like, I'm just like fake laughing. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, just boosting his head up, just kiki ki or whatever. Fast forward by the end of the night, he's asking me the same thing. He's just like, oh, where are you going to be at after this? I'm like, oh, I have um, to work in the morning, so I'm not going to be able to hang out tonight. He's like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna write you. Please send me your WhatsApp, send me your WhatsApp. They leave or whatever. Well, they basically left when the club closed or whatever. Fast forward um, that same night, y'all. This time, he was calling me on Instagram, and I actually answered the call. When I answered the call, he was just like, where you at? Where you at? Are you off work? And it was like three o'clock in the morning by this time. I'm like, I'm in bed. I'm going to sleep or whatever. And then after I hung up the phone, y'all, I restricted him again. And I don't even know why I picked up the phone a second time. I don't even know why, but I picked the phone up, restricted him again. The same thing the next morning when I woke up, I had a gazillion and one calls for him. And it's weird because he's asking me again, do you like this? Sending me pictures of rings and asking me, do I like them? And what type of dress I want? He started sending me pictures of wedding dresses and all of this crazy stuff. And I'm just like, sir, we're not getting married. You old enough to be my granddaddy. Like, <laughs> this is a joke or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, I got to I gotta dodge him. And at that time, I also was dealing with other creepy customers. So I just decided all together, I'm just going to make another bottle girl page. Like, I'm just not going to post on my personal page because I don't feel comfortable letting people know where I'm at. And when I'm there, because it's weird, like it's just getting real weird out here. So I created another bottle girl account and I didn't connect this with my personal account. Anytime I said I was going to be somewhere or tell, told anybody to book me, I would never have any pictures of me on any other flyers or anything. Like I would just tag the promo group page that I was working for. And that was it. Like if you knew it was my account, cause I would put my name on there, you knew. Like you had to know me from the club. You couldn't go on my personal Instagram to find out where I was at. I just had stopped posting that all together. Keep that in mind, y'all. So fast forward, um, I think I didn't work for like a few days. And like I said, I was working for a promo group. So I never was at a set club. That's why it was starting to get weird that he would be at all the clubs I was at, y'all. And it was like I was at four or five different clubs. And I never posted on my personal Instagram where I would be at. But he would just pop up there. That following week, I end up working at um, Playground. Or let me not expose the club names. But anyway, y'all, I end up working at this other club. And again, he popped up there like he was waiting for me at the door, y'all. Like he wasn't at the bar. Like literally when I came to work at like 8 a.m., he was one of the first people that was already there. Like because if you're a regular at spots, they'll let you in um, early, y'all. So he was already in there. And he's like, hey, hey, so whatever. Hey, da, 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 da. And I'm just like, hey, like how you doing or whatever. At the time, I still wasn't thinking anything of it. Wasn't thinking it was giving stalkerage vibes. But I was wondering like, 
how did you know I was here? I probably, I don't recall, but I'm sure I probably asked him like, hey, how did you know I was here, y'all? And I don't really remember what he said if I did ask him that, but it was just mad or weird how he was popping up to all the clubs that I work and I never had a set club to work at. So that same night, again, y'all, anytime he would come into the club, the payout would be like no less than like $200, $300. Like he was a, a great tipper. So <laughs> I ain't really minded at first. So that happened, and mind you, anytime I would see him, he would have the same little gestures, say the same thing, call me by wifey, like, that's how he would address me, and he would say, like, when you gonna stop playing and pick out your ring, I'm ready to marry you, like, yesterday, like, just little, with odd little stuff he would say, y'all, and he was a heavy drinker, like, he would come to the club all the time, people, other girl, bottle girls had even told me that he's a regular at a whole bunch of spots, like, he's not new to this, and I was kind of confused because, a year ago, he told me he was based in L.A., but for some reason, he was always in Houston. But anyway, I digress. I worked that night at Playground. Um, of course, he tipped me out real, real good. Same thing, blowing me up on Instagram. But like I said, I had already fell back and restricted him on Instagram, and I didn't restrict, um, didn't unrestrict him this time just simply because I felt like he was doing too much. And I was kind of confused how he was popping up to all of these clubs that I was at. But fast forward to, I want to say, this was around the time where I was getting ready to quit because it was a whole bunch of, if y'all ever worked in nightlife, it was just, I bet y'all my camera ended up dying, but where was I? Okay, so now I'm no longer working at a club. This don't have anything to do with Kenya or any of my customers. It's just simply because there's a lot of favoritism and a lot of drama going on in the background. It ain't like that. And like I say, the only person that was really tipping me out, like the only money that I was really actually making was from Kenya. All my other customers, all the other clubs, y'all, it was lame. There was no money to be made. So a lot of times I was showing up, like prior to having him at the clubs, I wasn't making any money. So I didn't really care to be outside anyway. But like I said, due to other things and favoritism and colorism, all this other stuff that was going on, I'm just like, yeah, this not from me. I would prefer to work directly from a club. I'm not about to compete with other women to be put on a schedule. Like I'm, <laughs> baby, that's what we not doing. It's either I'm it or I'm not it. Like I'm not doing it. So fast forward, I'm no longer working at the club. Like I said, Kenya would be blowing my Instagram up, but he's an incognito baby like out of sight out of mind he's in my request i don't see any of his messages until i go to my request y'all and even then i would get a whole bunch of requests so i would never really see his name until i start noticing like every like maybe once a week y'all i would check my requests on instagram at this time and i will always see his name move up like it'll be like maybe 14 messages where i can't even see him on my front page of my request and then all of a sudden he'll be like pushed back to the top so one day i just opened the message y'all and when I opened the message, I didn't open it, open it. Like, it's not going to show that I seen it, but I opened the message and it's a whole bunch of paragraphs of this man saying that he was serious about wanting to marry me. He's sending me pictures of rings. He's telling me that he'll buy it today. He's asking me to send him my cash at my Zelle. Like, he was just doing a lot. And like I said, y'all, I'm not trying to rub skin with no wrinkly old man. Like, kudos to the girls that do it for a check. But baby, you got to at least be fine and have some sauce. Like, y'all, it was giving, in a decade, I would be changing his diapers. Like, he was old or whatever. So, I was, you know, I wasn't trying to go there with him. But anyway, fast forward, I seen it. I screenshotted it, showed my friends, like, does he still come to this club? Because I was cool with one of the bottle girls. Like, I had a few of them on Instagram. So, I messaged her and was like, is he still a, still a regular at this club? And this is what got me. This is when I knew that he was really only targeting and stalking me. Because she was just like who kenya no nah, i honestly haven't seen him in weeks and i'm like when the last time you seen him she's like honestly i haven't seen him since you left the club like i have not seen him so i'm like all right that's a bit odd and then she was telling me like girl go ahead and send him that zell send him that cash up or if you don't send yours hell send him my zell send him my cash up and i'm just like nah he he weird or whatever so i write that off don't even think i didn't even think of nothing at that time y'all i just thought looking back <laughs> in hindsight it was weird but at the time when she was like girl i haven't seen him at the club since you left the club i didn't think anything of it at that time y'all i was just like all right <laughs> it's weird and i went on about my day 
fast forward um i still have my bottle girl promo page but like i said i'm not active on this page i would check this page every like once in a while but y'all know if you are on instagram and you switch in between accounts it'll show you like a number of how many notifications that you got one day um i'm switching between like my business account and uh, i had my i had a um a hair page account at the time i'm switching between my big bossy minks hair page and my personal account and then i i never y'all i never click on the bottle girl account because like i said i was no longer a bottle girl so there was no reason for me to access this page but one day i see it lit up and it says i have like 10 notifications and like i said y'all that page only had like 50 followers so who's blowing me up over there i opened a message and y'all why is it kenya blowing me up why is it him asking me like when are you coming back to the club i haven't seen you you've been annoying me and disregarding me on my main page um what's up like i gave you money and i gave you so much money it's wrong how you do me y'all he just writing a whole bunch of nothing basically saying i used him it's wrong how i did him asked me when i was coming back and the weird was like the weird thing was the gag was y'all this page was not connected to my regular page it didn't have my name on it it had like my club name but it didn't have any pictures of me on it like i didn't post any pictures of me on it it was literally just flyers of some of the other bottle girls that worked there so i'm just like this is weird like how how are you finding me on this page that was like the only message that i had on this page but again y'all i write it off i'm just like all right that's weird block him on my um bottle world page and i actually end up logging out that page because like i said it was no purpose for me to have that page anymore fast forward to i want to say like a few months later i started getting all of these dms from like accounts that don't have any pictures or anything and i could tell that it's him because you know how if a person's first language is not english you can just tell y'all like how he was writing the messages he wasn't saying like i don't know y'all it was just it was just giving it was him y'all it, it didn't have his profile picture or it didn't have any followers but it was like i was getting several message requests of people saying like um ace you owe me um pick up why well, i haven't seen you i gave you money you owe me like he just was writing all this entitlement stuff and i'm just thinking like i owe you you bought bottles on gratuity and you tip like how do i owe you or whatever but i'm not going back and forth i'm not seeing anything i'm just reading the messages and i'm just like yeah this is definitely this is definitely him or whatever fast forward to about two weeks after that after i see that message again y'all it's just whatever the man is crazy he's obsessed i don't feel any type of way about it until he finds my youtube y'all and the only reason why i knew it was him is because he started naming all the clubs that i work at he started commenting on like multiple videos of mine and i'm just like <laughs> baby i'm really not gonna be able to get rid of this man and it was kind of crazy because y'all know i used to post vlogs which i'm gonna start back posting vlogs but this is another reason why back then i stopped posting vlogs so much because i used to post like moving vlogs and moving content but i stopped posting it so much just simply because he started commenting on those vlogs basically telling me like um when are you coming back to this club i know where you at ace and the only reason why i knew it was him y'all because he was addressing me by the name ace and when i would click on the youtube like i would block the youtube but he would always come back like on another account just spamming my comment section saying when i'm coming back when i'm gonna pay him his money back it was just a whole lot of rah rah and i'm like all right this is getting out of hand so i had to end up telling my little yeah yeah that i was talking to at that time that this man is like stalking me or whatever and i sent him pictures of him and told him about it because at this time i was talking to somebody so i will always be at their place and they will always be at my place so i wasn't really worried about it and i had never been stalked before so i really didn't know how to handle the situation but i was just like this is weird like how you find my youtube channel and i'm not gonna act like it's hard to find my youtube channel because my youtube channel is connected to my main instagram like if you type my youtube channel name or if you type my instagram name into youtube then it'll pull up my channel like i'm not gonna act like it's hard to find my channel like you don't gotta be bill nine the science gotta find this channel but how did you find this channel like you're blocked like why are you why are you looking for me or whatever so i had stopped bl blogging around this time y'all because he was commenting on all my recent um blogs back in 2021 saying that he was gonna find me and he was gonna get his um money he wanted to love me he wanted to marry me like just commenting all of this outrageous stuff and basically y'all this man did this for all of like the rest of 2022 he did this for like a year and i would always block his comment and delete his comment and he kind of stopped i want to say 
Rap was poor 2023. He stopped commenting on videos and I haven't heard any signs or anything from him. But yeah, y'all, that's how I end up. Um, oh, but that's how I end up getting a soccer. I don't know how I got rid of him. Maybe he got tired. I don't know, y'all. Maybe he got too old to be playing these childish games and he just stopped stalking me. Or maybe he found another girl to stalk that work at the club. But it was just the weirdest, the weirdest thing, the bizarrest things. Like, even now, I'm working. Um, well, I'm not working, but I was thinking about getting back into nightlife. But I know this time around, baby, I'm going to do it way differently. I'm not posting anything on my personal um Instagram, I'm not telling y'all on social media what clubs I'm working at just because safety first. He was just doing a lot. But yeah, y'all, that's pretty much the end of this story time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in my next video. Mm -hmm.